rotate this. I don't think I can, huh? Oh, there we go. Ooh. Damn, that's gonna suck for y'all though. I'll leave it like this. Yo, what's going on? So I'm uh, starting this, starting my third episode. I shouldn't even call it episode. My third live, I should say. Um, I did my first two on Periscope, but as some of you might know, Periscope's like dying. So, um, I can't do YouTube live on my phone until I have a thousand subscribers, which is just mad corny, but whatever. You know how Google do. You know how Google do. Google do that. So I got to look in. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out. So this is a different setup. This is my first time on Twitch. I'm looking for the, where's the camera spot? Hold on. I'm going to be doing a lot. All right, cool. There we go. So if I look there, that means I'm looking at y'all. But if I, you know, if my eyes go, you guys understand. Y'all done this before, right? I'm like the first dude on Twitch. But who knows where you're going to hit us? You might hit us on Spotify. You might hit us on Apple Podcasts. You might hit us on YouTube. You know what I mean? So just shout out to everybody out there. Um, it's, a, it's a chilly night, as you can see. This is not the tint or dirt or grime on my windows. This is uh, this is the ice. You know what I mean? This is like, this is like that cave that Superman and his father were in. You know what I mean? I can't remember what that the name of that cave is. One of my watchers, one of my zero live watchers and viewers right now, uh, put in the comments the name of uh, Superman's cave. What was the name of that cave? The cave of. Solace, or am I thinking of a James Bond movie? <laughs> that sounds like something Daniel Craig was in. Hold on, let me take out these headphones. I don't know if the audio sounds better or worse now, but we'll see. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. I know some of y'all listening to this at 4 a.m., so let me keep it chill. But, uh, what was it called? The Cave of Solitude or something like that? But that's what this is. That's where I'm reporting live from. This is the booth for today. <clears throat> so, um, what are we talking about, guys? What are we thinking about? What's on our mind? You know what I mean? What's on our mind? You know, not what's on the mind of what we should be thinking about some catastrophe somewhere, but what's on your mind? What's on your mind? You know, how often do you think about what you want to think about? You ever think about that? I sound like an old pimp from the, from the 70s. Listen, girl, you ever think about things that you think about? You ever think about that? Cat Williams type. But you know what? You know what? Cat Williams might have a point. Nah, but like... You know, like, we got so... You know, when I was in L.A., I used to do this thing called sensory deprivation. Everybody, anybody ever done that? Any of my uh, viewers, sensory deprivation? Let me see in the comments. Okay, a couple of you say, you've seen sensory deprivation, you've done it. So pretty much for those that don't know what it is, it's a, it's like a tank, it's like a walk-in freezer type. Um, you can leave it anytime, so it's nothing to be scared about, but it's a tank that, try, it's, the attempt is to take away all of your senses. So it's to leave your mind in a, in a place of complete solitude, of complete, just separateness you know what I mean of course that's super west coast right that's super LA style but uh so you get in there and there's water that goes up to like your shin and this water is filled with like 1200 pounds of Epsom salt okay so your water your body's totally buoyant almost no matter your size I mean I don't know if Shaq can go in there but most of y'all ain't Shaq you can get in there you can plop down it's more buoyant than the Red Sea I'm sure you've heard some stories about Red Sea or Dead Sea I think it's the Dead Sea one of the seas Red, Red Dead Redemption Seas <clears throat> it's one of those seas where your body floats you'll float in this water no matter what then on top of that it's pitch black and it's soundproof so there's no you can't hear anything you can't see anything you can't feel anything because your body's super light but the kicker is that the room the air the water is all heated up to body temperature. So at some point while you're sitting in there and you're chilling, you're, you can't feel the difference between where your body 
is submerged in the water and where it's touching the air. So that combined with the fact that you can't see yourself and you can't, your, your body is weightless, your body, body is weightless. You kind of lose the sensation of having a body in and of itself. Your, your brain is now doing no work to decipher sounds or any of your senses or anything that's coming in through your body. And it's now just your mind. For real. So that's like the one that I used to go to. It's called Float Lab. It's uh, it was owned by his dude name. I think his name was Crash. Um, anyway, it's a two-hour session, and I did maybe like fifteen of them over a span of time, and it is a wild experience. You know, because so much of I mean, I speak for myself, but I know this is the truth for a lot of people. So much of our identity is found in our physical selves. And in a lot of ways, not just our physical selves, but our reflection of ourselves seen on the faces and on, through the experiences of other people around us that are interacting with us. You know, so it's like you create your identity by what you're seeing and how you're feeling, coupled with how people react to you based on the choices that you make when you're with them. You know, do they find me funny? Do they find me attractive? I hope they're having as good of a time as I'm having. Why does he hate me? Why does she hate me? What did I do to deserve this? Why are they acting so evil? Like all of this stuff, you know what I mean? But when you're in that tank, it's like there's no other people and there's almost not even yourself. Cause your body's just not even there. It's like a it's it's like a dream state, but like while you're awake. Now I'm not saying it's like anything. I say I got a viewer. I I don't know who it is though, but I want to give a shout out to whoever that is. But <clears throat> you know, it when your brain doesn't have to do any of that, what is your brain? You know, is that the eye? Is the eye? that you think about when you say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Is it your body? Like, have we been, have we over time gotten used to this physical experience so much that we consider what we are as human beings as our physical selves? But so much of our experience individually happens inside of our own mind. Like there's a voice inside of your own mind that you talk to every single day that you've talked to and conversed with since you as the, your earliest memory but that voice and that conversation is only heard and understood by you and then you take the things that you whatever discuss I guess within yourself and then you turn those into actions and choices that you make out in the world and then people respond to those actions and those choices but you're giving people things to react and respond to that's not, that's only a portion of what you are because p another part of what you are is what you think. You know, I try, I, I, I like, I was talking to my boy at work, my boy Maddie and my boy Lucas at work. And I was connecting it to like, if y'all remember um, Independence Day with Will Smith, one of the greatest movies of all time. You, you, you know the joint. But there's a scene where, <laughs> and I love Patrice O'Neill's uh, <laughs> recanting of this but there's a scene where Will Smith punches punches the alien and says welcome to earth and the alien gets knocked out but we realize that that's not the alien that's just the alien's outfit <laughs> it's just the alien suit the mask like comes up and there's like a little alien sitting inside of what we thought was like the like the suit you know what I mean same thing with, uh, with uh, men in black you know the face comes off and there's a little alien inside of the body. That's kind of what I felt like when I'm in this float tank and I'm in this sensory deprivation tank because now my body is completely devoid of all senses. And I started thinking about what my body is. You know, what are, what are our hands, our, our feet, our eyes, our nose, our ears? They're all, they're all things to, to collect information that we send to the brain and the brain figures out how we want to categorize it and then our brain decides that's what it is but 
a person that doesn't have any, you know, a blind person is still a human being. A person that can't hear is still a human being. What if a person had no senses at all? Are they still a human being? A person that's in a coma, for instance, they're still a human being. Now, they don't have any senses anymore, but they're kind of in a state that I was like in that sensory deprivation tank. Now, I'm busy going crazy in my mind thinking of all these concepts and thinking of all these deep things, growing as a person, being what I consider to be alive. But my body's completely unplugged, as you might think, or like consider. Then there's people that have this thing called synesthesia. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. And I'm going to butcher the description, but essentially it's like your your brain mixes what senses come into like what senses you're considering. So like they'll see something and they'll get a, a smell a, like a smelling sensation or they'll touch something and it'll be like a sensation like if they heard something. And it's just like what is the brain doing in there? Is that I and that voice and that thought and that conversation, is that just, is that what you, is that just a product of what the brain is? Like, is, does that only exist because as an offshoot of whatever the brain is doing and we just don't know much about the brain? Or is that I kind of like what a human being really is and this body is just, uh, for all intents and purposes, a suit? to sense the world that's around me and then bring that information into my brain so we can figure out what's going on. It's just like a, it's just something to think about and consider. Cause you know, we see so many stories go awry, people's lives go awry when they're forced to do something that goes against what they know and think and believe in their mind. You know? So what is the human experience? What is the I? What is, what is, if, if, I don't know, you know, maybe we don't even know what any of this experience is. You know what I mean? Like bees, for instance, like they fly around by my, the magnetic poles of the earth and there's all different types of light that we don't even see. You know what I mean? There's types, there's things going on in this reality that we don't sense because I guess it wasn't necessary for our evolutionary survival of, or what, I don't, you know, I don't know, but I, I would assume. So if like all this stuff is going around that we don't sense and we exist, you know what I mean? How do we, I don't know, it's just, it's just how do we separate what we are as human beings from our mind and what our body is? You know, I think we've gotten really attached to our physical reality so much that we think that our entire our entire truth is founded in what we can see and what we can smell and what we can touch. But we understand that there's things that exist outside of those realms of understanding. And on top of that, we realize that human beings still can be human beings without sight, without without sense of touch or without the sense of taste or something like that. You know what I mean? So what really is the human experience? If we're led to believe that our human experience is something that we can touch and it's just that, I think we're selling ourselves short. You know, maybe that's also a Western culture thing, because I know in Eastern and Eastern and I think it's a I'm not going to say it's a religion or a way of a, a way of thinking a philosophy called Wabi Sabi, which is like an appreciation for the non-perfection in things. And maybe in this Western culture, we obsess about the perfection. You know, we always want to be the number one stunner. We have, you know, number two is like a person could work so hard and go to the Olympics and win silver and feel and like just want to end it all. You know what I mean? So there is that kind of like, I need to be the number one that we kind of feel, but you know, a, a human being that doesn't have access to any of those senses, they're still human beings, you know? You can still be what you are without 
anything that we consider to be human being. Yet we fight over these things that are just so surface level, you know? I read this story today. Um, I can't remember where I read it. But it was from December 12th, 2020. And I think it was the University of Virginia. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm going to get it to you, though. Actually, you know what? If I can be on live, y'all can tell me on Twitch. If, I, if I'm on live, can I... Can I hop out of here and go to something without ending the live? I don't want to try it because I don't want to mess it up. But pretty much this dude had n no arms. Quadriplegic, they called him, I believe. And they found a way for him to control two prosthetic arms. This is like a two-year study that they've been working on with him. And he's able to control two prosthetic arms with his thoughts. They got it hooked up to the left side of his brain and the right side of his brain. Now, for the first time, I think they said since he was an early teen, like 13, 12, when he lost his arms in like an accident. The for, for the first time, he was able to grasp utensils and feed himself with prosthetic arms using his thoughts. And they said in this study, you know, he said, look, it's not as easy as saying, move left arm, move right arm. It's not that easy. It's more like one plus one equals 3.8. And you're trying to figure out why that is and how to manipulate that. In other words, we have our arms, but we moving them, but it's like, we're doing more than just telling our arms, move up, move down, hold, hold utensil, not hold utensil. It's like a complex thing that's going on in the mind that we're trying to emulate. And we got it to this point now where he can feed himself with his thoughts. Damn. That's crazy. I mean, think about that. I mean, that was happening December 12th. I could go down a whole nother discussion right now about what what is it, what is in the newspapers and on the news happening on that day that is more important than a dude who could who had no use of his arm since he was 12 years old who finally can feed himself with his thoughts what i mean what could be more important than that i know we're going through coronavirus but let's be honest we don't we we know it's here we don't necessarily need to know at 4:15 p.m. if there's anything different than we heard from 3:19 PM, you know what I mean? There's time. There's time to take a break, especially to help the psyche of humanity to show us that human beings are doing some incredible things and we're we're just like we just choose to just let that go. Whatever. Okay. I could go down that 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 route, but I don't want to do that today. I'm having a good time. And I don't want to think about them. Oh my gosh, they get on my nerves so much. But anyway. I could go down that route, but it was December 12th, 2020 when I read this. And, you know, he's talking about crazy stuff. You know, he's saying, like, one way that they're looking to 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 mimic the, the complexity of, of the way we use everything that we have here, excuse me, here with our suit, our body, you know, is having prosthetics that have robotics take care of like all the minimal tasks so that the mind can continue to put its thoughts onto other more complex tasks, you know, because you don't want to be sitting here thinking like move arm up, 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 move, you know, once you know what you want to do, the robotics would take care of that. And over time, it would be this, this symbiotic dance with your thoughts telling the, the AI and the robotics in your prosthetics how to move. And just kind of being the general of that. And I'm thinking, maybe, maybe. Is this, you know, everyone's so scared about AI taking over. And I understand. I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying this is a reality. I'm just, I'm, I'm putting this forth as a thought for people to think and for people to consider. You know what I mean? Because I, I think we do, we do enough, we do enough stressing about what we think is right and wrong and 
what someone's allowed to say and what someone's just this is just a thought just just go with the thought and let your mind go where your mind goes you don't have to tell anybody what you're thinking just go where your mind goes but we're so scared about ai taking over and rightfully so for a lot of reasons it's a scary thing especially for the fact that it's unknown you know we're looking at it it's just like is this really actually possible and it's just like yeah it's actually possible and then some AI comes out the cut and beats a nigga in 2K. That's when it's all going to go loose. Like, <laughs> when AI can come out and cross a nigga up and talk trash. You know what I mean? Oh, wait. Can I say that word on Twitch? I don't know. We'll figure it out later. <clears throat> but what if, what if the human experience was never meant to be all of this? What if all of this... What if all of this is always meant to be a suit? for what humanity actually is. This is all a reflection of what humanity actually is. Like, what if humanity is actually like a thought? Not a thought, but I mean, like, true humanity is found of what's inside of your mind. And then it gets represented in your body and, and in the way you dress and in the, the type of car you decide to, to drive, the type of friends that you type choose to have around, the words you choose to use. Damn, I'm just struggling right now. <clears throat> you know, it, it gets expressed in all these different dimensions, but where does it start? And for those that are just listening, I'm pointing to my mind. Yo, I'm super black and I'm super Italian, so I do so much animating with my hands and my face and my ridiculousness and my energy that I don't even know if any of that translates on just the audio podcast. But if you want to see the video podcast, it's on YouTube and I go live on Twitch. But you're gonna you're gonna probably hear this anywhere. But so I'm thinking about this guy, and I'm thinking about like, what if, what if AI, what if AI is meant to be, a companion, by an upgraded body suit. <laughs> Like, what if, what if, I mean, we love this. Of course we love this. I love this. No, you know, if anybody knows me, I love human beings. And I'm, for those that are listening, I'm like touching my hands and I'm like touching my face, like the human body. Like I love the, I love the history of the human experience. I love delving into old cultures and how we used to think and how we came from and where we came from and just the physical history of us. I love all of it. Biology. I'm just getting into all this stuff way more now as I grow older, not in the school the school era did a lot to kill my desire to learn stuff. But now I feel like very curious about a lot of those things. And I'm very appreciative of this physicality that we have and everything that comes along with it. But as we know, it, you know, it decays and it goes. And that's just the nature of life. You know, we call it death. Well, I'm black, so I said death. But we, we call it death. We call it, <clears throat> you know, the end of life or whatever sometimes. But, you know, if, you, if anybody's ever been to, like, a funeral or been to, like, a situation like that, you know, you look at that body, like, it looks like it's devoid of the thing that you knew them to be. It doesn't look like that's them in there. I think that's just the weirdest thing. It's like... I feel sad when I see it, but at the same time, I don't feel sad because I'm like, that's not them. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't sit up late nights with their body. I sat up late nights with their mind. You know? Me and my boy Druzy out out, 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 in, uh, out on the West Coast, like, when we, when we work the bar and we work, you know, the restaurant, and we get out at midnight, we get out at 1 a.m., you know, we, we in the back, throwing out the trash and the empty kegs. <laughs> you know, we conversing about our minds, you know what I mean? We're conversing about our thoughts, about our the things we find funny, the, our histories, and you know, we're conversing about that. And then you see people when they pass, and it's just like, they don't have that thing there. It doesn't look like that person is in there. It looks like that, that suit is in there. And I think that's why, you know, people say like energy lasts forever. You know, Christians believe the belief of Christianity is the soul goes to heaven or hell. You know, the soul goes on after this physical experience one way or the other. 
And there's many other beliefs and cultures and religions that have different ways of believing that energy continues or becomes something else. And in other cultures, there's reincarnation. And, and some people believe you just cease to exist. Similar to how reality was to you, like how you considered reality before you were born. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad, it just wasn't even a, a, a consideration. But I still feel like there's so much going on inside of the inside of the mind that doesn't even make it out into this physical world. But we consider that the physical death is the ultimate death. I'm not saying I know that to be true. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. People coming to me for answers. I don't know. I'm just considering. I'm just pontificating. I'm just out here in my clean sweater, you know what I mean? And this old coat scarf, something I could have flossed with back in high school, but this is like old school now. I'm just thinking. I'm just talking. You know what I mean? But it just don't seem like it correlates to me. You know? You know, back in the day, they used to bury people and then they dig up their coffins and stuff and they find scratch marks on the tops of coffins and stuff back because they used to bury people alive because they thought they were dead. I'm not saying that we do that now, but like, is, is the assumption like, oh, we understand reality totally now and the people in that era didn't understand reality totally. Like that was like 80 years ago. <laughs> I don't know, like 100, 200 years ago or something like that. Uh -huh. Do we have it all figured out now? Or are we still only informed by certain groups of people and we don't even know? <laughs> I'm over here going hard. I need to chill. But like this story comes out where this dude is controlling his prosthetics with his thoughts. And, you know, we hear this um, Elon Musk with Neuralink. And, you know, you got to give it to Elon because he knows how to market science Neil deGrasse Tyson knows how to market science. You know who doesn't know how to market science? The rest of science. I mean, I guess that's just the that's just that's a, just the reality across all platforms. Is that the people inside it don't know how to market it? That's why you hire marketing people to make it hot. But like, the public is gonna get behind things. That, the public needs to get behind ideas because that's how the money gets behind ideas and the influence gets behind ideas. But how do the people know? How do the people know what to, what to, what to follow, what to look at? You know, what's, what's the mindset of the people? The mindset of the people I hear about is human beings are trash. I hate humanity. Humanity is a virus. Humanity is a parasite on some, y'all know the movie. Like, really? Humanity is a parasite? The world would be good if it wasn't for humanity? What, what, is so, what is so morally pure about, yo, <laughs> my dude showed me an alligator ripping a face off of a zebra, dog. Y'all know how alligators do? They grab, they bite, and then they roll. He he ripped the face off of a zebra. And the zebra was still trying to get away. That's nature, man. It's not, humanity ain't coming in and doing introducing this idea of death into society. This is this is nature, yo. It's not, I'm not saying it's like the fittest survive. Like I, I understand that. Like we're way more conscious and powerful than any other animal. We need to respect that we need to respect that and the way you you don't respect that by only airing and only telling people about the awful atrocities of what we do because it's like you can't have a news network and say all we do is rip faces off of zebras because that's not all that we do this dude can feed himself for the first time since he's 12 years 12 years old do you know what it's like to not know how to feed yourself He do. 
And now he can eat a slice of pizza on his own. Now he can be his own man. You know what I mean? He's thinking about it, but he doesn't have the, the suit to do what he has to do because of some something that happened in nature. Some accident that just happened in reality. Because that's where we live. Human beings don't come in and we just... Yo, come on, man. Come on. Yo, my boy, me and my boy Luke was looking up. You, you ever heard of this concept? It's called sexual cannibalism. And it's a it's a a commonality within certain animals and insects where eating, killing and eating your mate is a part of the sexual process. And it always goes one way. It's always the female eating the male, by the way. That's another live. I'm going to do that one at another time. But that's reality. And you know, yo, you know what they said? They said <laughs> in some situations, the death happens before copulation. And sometimes it happens after copulation. And you sit there and you think, so what does that mean? That means you would think it was just that they would have sex and then they would kill their mate. But in some situations, they kill their mate and then they have sex with them. But human beings are, are the worst thing that ever happened to this planet. Psych! We already hate spiders. To know that there's species of spiders that do that, does that make them any more lovable? But we got celebrities and all these entertainers that go on just like, human beings are awful and they just destroy everything. Please donate money to just believe in this idea that human beings are just the trashest thing of all time. You're out of your mind. Human beings are the one of the most magnificent things in nature I have ever seen. Period. I love me some space. I love me some archaeology. I love me some biology. I love me some what's the animal one? Animalology. I'm way smarter than this, but this is live. You know, I get nervous. <laughs> I get really nervous on live. And this one viewer has been sticking with me. I don't know who that is, but I have a feeling that's Maddie. And if that's Maddie, what's good, partner? <clears throat> Should be writing in the chat. I mean, anyway. Humanity is, is humanity is amazing. And let me tell you, we didn't have no predecessor to tell us how to do this. You feel me? We were, I'm not even going to say equal level to the other animals and the other elements of nature at our birth. We were probably low, low, low level. And because of what we got right here, pointing to the brain, pointing to the mind, we hopped, skipped, and jumped on these cats, yo. Like, we came through, and we, we are a species that can regulate other species' ecosystems to help them. And we do that. These animals don't know nothing. Y'all be scrolling through Instagram, an invention by humanity. On your phones, an invention by humanity. That you get from internet, an invention by humanity. From satellites that float around in space, an invention by humanity. And you see these videos of some <laughs> awful thing that humans do. Some turtle will be covered in oil and porno magazines. And there's a soda plastic thing wrapped around its neck. You know what I mean? And then the human, there's groups of human beings that go around the world and find those animals and they tend to them. They, they take hooks out of their mouths. They, you know what I mean? That's, we do both of those things. I'm not trying to say humanity is this perfect thing that, that, you know what I mean, walks the world. That's, that's a false way of thinking. There's some people that walk around on this earth and think that they understand morality and that they stand on a sense of morality that's so pure that that they that anybody should give them an opportunity to teach them how to how to be a better person like chill i understand humanity has its as great as we can be we can be you know we're, we're on both sides of that spectrum in totality but so is the alligator that ripped off the face of a zebra like they some they can make nice what suede shoes and, you know, let me stop leather shoes suede oh man i'm all messed up i'm going I didn't even take no no energy, no nothing. This is just straight for our raw, just raw energy. I don't know how long this live goes. They said something about 30 minutes. So I'm just saying, like, I, I, I you don't need to be up in the comments talking about, but humans have done this and humans have done that, and they're still doing this and still doing that. That's facts. I would never take that away from us. I would never take that away from us. 
you catch a human out in nature, out in the wild, singular, all of nature, humanity, and the animal kingdom is going to give back to us exactly what we've, been, what we've given to them. They would tear us apart individually. But the reality is this. You get 15 of us that can communicate. And I'm sorry, you ain't got no chance. You just don't have a chance. We're going to have some babies. Those babies are going to be strong. Those babies are going to have babies. Those babies are going to be strong. We're going to be thinking our way in and out of things. And then we're going to get to a point where we have complete and utter dominance over this planet, which we do. But nobody's nobody's taught us what to do. It's like being a teenager and then just it's like imagine going to college out of middle school and you skip in high school. Totally like you would have no idea what to do, how to find a place to live, who to. Black Lagoon. What's this? You just you just entered into one of the greatest lives that has ever existed. That's what this is. But what's up, Black Lagoon 2019? Thank you for coming in and checking and seeing what's good. I wish you the best, my G. <laughs> um, what was my train of thought? Oh, true. Nobody taught us how to do what we're doing right now. So imagine, imagine you just graduated eighth grade. You get your little eighth grade di diploma or whatever they get when you graduate eighth grade. And then they kick you into a master's program at Oxford. And they're like in Chicago or something. And they're like, get it done. Figure out where to live. Figure out where to eat. Figure out who to hook up with. Figure out how to marry. Figure out how to find friends. Do all that now. Like, I don't know what to do. Human beings just evolved out of this thing and we're out here doing what we do. So half of what we do is just destroying everything around us because we're like toddlers out here. And the other half of us is cleaning up the mess that we're doing. Like, we're like, I don't know what else he said. Oh, this is about. We're like, we're just making it happen as much as we can. I need to stop reading these comments because I'm getting thrown off of my thoughts. So I'm just, I'm just, I just wanted to pose these thoughts and these, <laughs> I'm Irish. Okay, that's what's up. Oh, you're Irish? I have a question. Are you really Irish or are you just saying that? Black Lagoon. Because I have a serious question for you if you are Irish. If not, I'm going to move on. It ain't taking too long to respond. I can't keep my people waiting like this. The people can't be waiting like this. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think I'm at the end of my live, you know, I just wanted to pose those, those, uh, those thoughts to y'all, you know, there's a man out there that can feed himself right now off of his thoughts. Oh, oh, true, true, true. Let me get to the end of what I was saying. So, <laughs> dang, I'm so thrown off of my thoughts. Ah, uh, man. It was something about androids. This is going to sound so crazy for Black Lagoon. It was something about androids and the brain and thoughts and robotics. I think is where I was going. Just I was just reading this story, this article, Black Lagoon, about this dude that hadn't been, he lost his arms and he hadn't been able to, uh, to eat and feed himself since he was 12 years old. But now he's able to do it off of just his thoughts. And they're combining robotics and AI and prosthetics to work in congruency with the mind and with thoughts so that people that don't have arms can or don't have limbs can move about life and 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 continue to do what they got to do so it just had me questioning like what is a human you know cuz we we definitely consider ourselves human to be what our physical selves are and what and what we perceive to be in the physical world but like this dude this dude didn't have arms but he was still a human being man you know, there's people that don't have senses. I might sound stupid right now, but I'm really making a point. You know, most of our experience as, as a human being, it comes from inside of the mind. But how much control do we have over our own mind? How much, how much control do we give other people and other things to limit what we think about and what we can imagine? If humanity really is... If humanity really is found deep in our thoughts and in our own minds, then how can we trust anybody that would want to limit the way you can think? Limit the types of opinions you can have. Limit the type of discourse that you can have. Limit the types of imagination you can have. You know, like, I think about the Wright brothers all the time. Like, these dudes, 
made I, I don't know exactly how that transition happened but from the way the story has been told to me throughout history maybe it's just the schools these dudes just made pl plane flying in their backyard with cardboard essentially like to think that we can be some creature just out here trying to survive in caves and fires and stuff to looking at birds in the sky and saying I want to do that and then we did that. And I mean, at a high level, it didn't stay at cardboard, yo. We got PJs. We got planes so fly that now people make money just to rap about planes. People make money to make songs about planes. That's crazy. That's what comes out of our mind. It keeps going. And now we had a now we had a stage where you could you could control your body with your mind, with your thoughts. I mean, who knows where that could go? Who knows where that could end up? Maybe that's what humanity really needs. Maybe humanity really needs an AI and robotic body to match this mind that can keep, that can just fathom anything and create anything. It can just break anything down with time. I mean, I'm not gonna say anything because there's probably some mysteries of the universe that we'll just never be able to crack, but Let's just say humanity's around for 10 billion years. Like, you don't think we're gonna find out more stuff? Like, y'all think, y'all think what we know now about what's good, what's bad, what's, what's right, what's wrong, all of that. You think we're gonna know all of that now in 2021? That we're gonna know a billion years from now? Like, psych. Oh, he gotta go. Hey, man. He said, "Oh, man, I got too much weed. I'm scared. I'm going." Something about the world is flat. I'm not gonna say the world is flat. I'm an intelligent being. I don't know. I don't know where you got that from. I can't like see all the comments. It's like cut off on Twitch. I gotta figure that out. But uh I don't know, man. I'm just thinking. And I hope y'all did some thinking too. This was great. And uh I wanna check y'all next time at another 4 a.m. This is just gonna pop out whenever I feel it. And if you feel it, follow, share it around. If not, peace. Like I, I wanna keep this kind of kind of chill anyway like this ain't something that i'm trying to like have on 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 everything you know what i mean i only want the people to tune in that are awake at this time and they like to explore thought you know what i mean because we just out here pontificating y'all have been great whoever that one viewer is holla at you boy this has been awesome peace out mikey's 4 a.m night audit i'll talk to y'all later